Persona 5 Royale is the upgraded version of the immensely popular JRPG that originally released in Japan back in 2016. With this definitive edition of the game comes a variety of new changes, which includes two new characters and confidants, a brand new semester and palace that culminates in two new endings, new gameplay mechanics, and reworked dungeons and boss battles. There are also a variety of new minigames, gameplay balance fixes, expanded character scenes, and so much more. While it might still share much of the same DNA as the original Persona 5, Atlas has packed Persona 5 Royale full of new content that is sure to delight newcomers and even veterans of the original with a far more robust experience. Royale starts off with a bang as it brandishes two of its biggest additions in the prologue. The protagonist, codenamed Joker, ends up using his grappling hook to reach a new area of the stairwell during his chase scene. Afterward, he encounters a mysterious and masked young woman who wields a persona and aids him in battle. She departs just as abruptly as she arrived, and Joker continues on his way. While the main premise of the original Persona 5 remains intact, it soon becomes apparent that the story has been tangibly altered due to the added presence of the two new characters. First is the mysterious girl, Kasumi, whom we met in the opening. The second is the psychologist, Maruki, brought in by Shinjin Academy after the infamous events of Kamoshida occur. Both newcomers are as interesting and nuanced as the rest of the main cast, and it's clear that plenty of effort went into both reworking the general writing and the spoken dialogue to ensure that they fit in with the plot seamlessly. Both new characters even receive their own confidence, giving the protagonists time to cozy up and learn more about their backstories and motivation. I found their confidence to be engaging, funny, and well-written, particularly Maruki's as his methods of counseling mirror how real-world psychologists and psychiatrist sessions run. There's even a tangible perk for ranking up their confidants. For each level, Kasumi awards the hero with a 5 HP increase, while Maruki provides him with a 5 SP increase. But even ignoring these benefits, the quality of writing alone places them as two of my favorite confidants in the game. Just as Kasumi and Maruki are intertwined with the protagonist, they're also deeply connected with each other. This all comes to a head during the new semester and final palace, which spirals into an emotional reveal and conclusion that contrasts well with the beautiful aesthetics of both the dungeon itself and the true final boss design. Without going into spoiler territory, I found the resolution between Kasumi, Maruki, and Joker to be wholly satisfying, if not somewhat predictable. The main cast also shares in the glow of additional screen time in Persona 5 Royale. Throughout the game, there are new holidays featuring brand new cutscenes and voice dialogue, new conversations that lead to special team-up moves being unlocked, new portrait artwork giving each character a more dynamic range of expressions, and a third tier of Personae that are unlocked during the new semester, among other features. Even the last party member, Haru, receives slightly better treatment, though her late introduction to the Phantom Thieves still hurts her overall development. Gameplay gets plenty of fixing as well. Each dungeon has been reworked to incorporate the grappling hook mechanic, which at first feels limited due to its fixed uses. Players will find that the hook not only serves as a far better way for Joker to traverse through each palace, but also lets you access brand new areas where will seeds can be found. Each palace contains three seeds, and finding them all unlocks a special accessory that, when equipped, allows the party member to permanently access a certain useful skill. Boss battles have also been revamped to either provide more of a challenge or to better connect them with their respective palace. For instance, Kamoshida's battle now involves two new slaves that help him set up his special attack. Madarame's battle features a new stage, and Kanishiro's fight now requires you to toss away an item to avoid his most powerful attack. While small changes, they make each boss battle feel more fleshed out and memorable from a gameplay perspective. Though, my one complaint is that the connection between the palace boss and their corresponding story arc could have been stronger and made more personal, resulting in a more compelling conclusion. More minigames make their debut in Persona 5 Royale, and not only are they a welcome break from the intensity of the main story, but they also provide players with gameplay advantages. The Thieves' Inn is an example of the former, as it lets players use collected P medals, the currency of the base, in order to purchase artwork for your gallery, soundtracks, and trophies depicting major story events to decorate said base with. You win P medals either by obtaining awards or by playing the card game Tycoon with your party members. I spent so much time playing Tycoon that it often feels like its own separate game, and the enthusiast voice work and expressions from the characters really immerses you in the experience of sitting back and playing a fun round of cards with your friends. As for other major changes in Persona 5 Royale, graphics have been noticeably upgraded, and they've been optimized for the PS4, resulting in a crisper look to the character models in 3D environments. PS4 Pro owners haven't been left in the dust either, as there's a 4K setting to choose from. There are also several new music tracks in Royale, and for the most part, they're quite enjoyable, particularly the new battle theme. That being said, I wasn't too impressed with the true boss theme. While a great track on its own, it lacked the weighty presence and punch that a final boss theme should have. If you never got around to playing vanilla Persona 5, then Persona 5 Royale is now the perfect starting point, filled with a plethora of new story and gameplay content to go along with all of the DLC from the original. This is without a doubt 
the definitive edition. However, what if you did sink over 100 hours into the original? Then the question becomes, how much did you enjoy Persona 5? Because make no mistake, even with all the shiny new things here included with Royale, this is still Persona 5. That means you will absolutely be playing through the same 100 hours of the base game, since no effort has been made to fix one of the most egregious issues of the original. First time players discovering each twist in turn will most decidedly find Persona 5 Royale exciting and fresh. However, veterans may have a difficult time staying engaged the whole way through, even with all the bells and whistles. Regardless, for an updated re-release, Persona 5 Royale is certainly worth the price of admission for newcomers. And if you enjoyed the original and are eager to jump back into the fray, then there's certainly more than enough new content and improvements to justify a second purchase. For more on Persona 5 Royale, be sure to check out our website, DualShockers.com, to read our full written review. And for everything else related to Persona 5 and more, be sure to subscribe here to DualShockers.